right, good morning. Uh, this video today is talking through a part of a government trial, 20 houses in the UK, that have had one of these heat pumps installed as part of a low temp trial. Let me show you what we've got here. This is a Mitsubishi Ecodan. It's an 11.2 kilowatt air source heat pump. It's a mono block, so there's only this. There's not another block like this inside the house, which would be a split system. Um, this has got two pipes, 28 mil pipes that are flow and returns that go from the back of that. And I'll show you where they go inside the house. Now I should just say, this whole unit is about to be removed in the next few weeks because this was deemed not powerful enough to do the heating that our property needs. Um, we've had a proper heat loss survey done now, given room by room calculations, and we're actually gonna have a, a bigger pump going down that garden a bit. But if I take you inside, bear with me a second, through the kitchen. Now, first things first, you will not have a room this big. So this is our plant room. Now, like I said, if you were to go with a heat pump, you will not have this level of kit. I'll actually zoom out a bit so you can see it all, hang on. There we go. So um, what we have got here is a 250 litre mixergy cylinder that is nothing to do with the heat pump install. Let me move the ball thrower out the way. That'll get the dog excited. Hello, Holly. So left hand side, 250 litre mixergy cylinder. It is plumbed in, but we're, we're using this as kind of a solar store. So we actually use excess um, solar power to heat this. And it's got a bit of hot water in there at the moment. So if you were to go for a heat pump, you would have a cylinder, maybe not as big as this, maybe smaller than this, but fundamentally, this is your hot water that comes from your heat pump. The rest of it um, from the heat pump directly goes into your radiators. Now we have got these big white boxes and these are called sun amp heat batteries. The bottom two, they actually heat our house. They actually heat our radiators. The top two provide hot water. And inside of this is a large thermal mass that changes how do I describe this? You know the stuff um, inside hand warmers, you know the stuff you break and it then gets hot as the liquid goes from liquid to solid? That's what's inside here. So the heat from outside changes the phase, what's called phase change material, and turns it from a liquid to a solid. And it's been tested to work thousands of times. But these are massive heat buffers. So inside of these are stainless steel coils, one that goes through these two batteries here and up into our radiators. The one at the top here, the cold water goes directly into this, no stored hot water, goes through the stainless steel cylinder, has a little bit of top up. So on the front of this, you can actually see that this, these three lights here, first one shows you that it's got power on, the second one shows you 33% or half full, that other one shows you full. So this actually is kind of like a gauge. This is fully heated up, ready to supply hot water. The last one is a immersion. So because these heat up to about 40 degrees, so the temperature that comes through, through these pipes from the heat pump, these heat up to about 40, 45 degrees. You need the immersion just to take it up so it's hot enough for a bath or a shower. So the immersion just tops up from the 40. So it's actually, I've been really impressed with the hot water side of this. The heating, not so. The heating it does to about 45 degrees. So when you first kick up your central heating, it pretty much the power goes out of those bottom two pretty quickly. And it just goes over to operate like a normal heat pump system where the actual flow and return just goes straight through into the uh, radiators. But it's a nice idea and it would work really well if you've got a flat or a small property, you could have just the heat batteries and no cylinder. So you could actually just have these for your heating and hot water. Even forget the heat pump, you could just have those. So they're quite flexible. My main problem with them is that they're they're kind of dumb units. So there's no real intelligence in them. You can't see how full they are apart from this one that's got that little gauge on it. So you can't see, you know, what is it five degrees in there? Is it 30% full? You can't see the core temperatures. You can't program them. So that part's been a little bit frustrating. Um, but I've got to like them over the last few months. How this works, this kind of all trickles away all day and all night. It's not going now because they're up to temperature. But in the middle of the night, and our ensuite is directly above this, I can hear these pumps going and just slowly bringing this whole thing up to temperature. So you've got this really cheap energy source as a heat store ready for action when you need uh, the actual space heating or the hot water. Um, what we're gonna have now is those big white boxes are going. Like I said, we're gonna have a bigger heat pump in the back garden and we're gonna have a 300 litre cylinder going here. So we're actually gonna have a 300 litre cylinder um, with a heat pump um, heat exchanger. So we'll actually have that come in from outside, go through the um, heat exchanger inside the 300 litre and we'll be able to program it in terms of it can come on during off peak. And then we've got the mixergy here as a second cylinder, which again, we've got 
twin immersions at the top connected to the solar PV and the mixer G. We've got another one at the bottom that we can wire in to give it a boost if it needs to. So we're actually gonna have 550 liters of stored hot water here. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you if you come through to the garage, this is the controls part of this. So on the back of the room I've just shown you, we've got this controller here, which is the uh, EcoDan controller, the FTC6. So this is actually the control box, the brains that controls the whole heat pump system. And next to it, we've got a phenomenal amount of cabling. This is what's actually controlling not only the pumps that control the system, but all of the observation and heat uh, monitors that were required as part of this trial. So there is a third party company that's monitoring all of the temperatures of our system so that the trial can be evaluated on behalf of the UK government as to whether this kind of system will work in a house, a 70s house like this one with pretty good insulation. Um, apart from that, and the rest of the gubbins in here, it's a bit of a dump as well. Let me just move this out of the way. See, we've got big bunches of shreddies in here. We've actually got here a Tesla Powerwall. Um, so we've got a Tesla Powerwall on the left-hand side there with a 13.2 kilowatts of storage. The box there is actually just there to protect the Powerwall when I park my car in there. It literally, it goes within that distance of um, touching the Powerwall. So um, that's the trouble with the Model S. It's a big old beast. So yeah, this is the controls and the wiring for the heat pump. Now, a lot of this is gonna be stripped out as part of the new install because you will not need all of the pumps that are in here. If I go back into the other room, and if that light comes on, a lot of these controls and everything will not be needed for the new system. We'll only need one or two pumps. And in fact, the pumps are gonna be uprated. So if I take you back outside, what we're actually gonna be doing this time is, and I take you down into the garden, I've just lifted up a couple of boards here because we're going to have to dig a trench. <laughs> All these flowers are coming out. So you see where that fuchsia bush is? Um, this one here. And you can kind of see where the current Eco Dan is and where the dog's just walking through. So we're going to be digging a trench right the way from this fuchsia bush, right the way through there. I'm going to have to lick all of those, lift all of those deck boards up and we're going to run a trench right the way through pretty much to the alleyway at the side of the house. And what that's going to have in it is a... I think it's 35 millimeter pipe, massively insulated, which will be going all the way through. Oh, you can excuse the saw sound behind. We'll go all the way through here and then join up with the actual insulation pipes at the end of the house there. So I'll go back indoors. That is the EcoDan heat pump with the sun and heat batteries. I like the idea of the sun and heat batteries. I think they can really work in a number of situations. Didn't quite work for us. Apparently out of the 20 or so houses, it's worked well in some, it hasn't worked well in others. The biggest problem I've got with this trial, and I'll show you them, and you may have seen me mention them before, are these things. These are the climber Venter radiators. And I will link to you now an image or a piece of video where you can see just how noisy these things are. But these have got fans in them. Heat comes in the bottom, sorry, air comes in the bottom. There's a little heat exchanger and then it comes out the top. But the noise these things make um, to try and heat a room, it just doesn't work. It works, I guess, in a, in a smaller property and it only works when you've got them actually turned on and running. So it's not like a radiator that stays warm after you turn it off. It's only warm for as long as the system's running. So as soon as you turn it off, then uh, the room starts to lose its temperature straight away. And we were paying back in January about 300 pound on electric. And that's on a really competitive rate, 5p off peak, 14p peak. So you can imagine now with, you know, energy prices heading up to 50, 60p per kilowatt hour, it would be enormously expensive to run this system. So all of those radiators, all of those climate venters are now being removed and will be replaced with standard oversized radiators. We've already done three upstairs and that's all being done as part of this trial. So the new heat pump and the oversized radiators are being installed in September. This video is being recorded on the 2nd of August. I will pop back and show you the new system when it's up and running. Bye for now.